Charlie, you're out of here? No, I just needed a spot for the month. Girl, I'm heading over. I gotta make a couple quick stops, and then I'll be there. Tell me what's on your mind. I wanted to ask if you'd take a look at some of these papers I found in my dad's estate about Jack Hammond. The guy behind the Hilltop Resort project? He is such a corrupting force in this town. I want to see him behind bars. If you want to delve deeper, I can show you the way. No, I'll be gone. Sharon? What's up? Sorry, I'm late. I'm leaving, you know, for good. I wanted to say goodbye. Where are you gonna go? Hey! Are you all right? Tell me, how did it all come to this? I heard this noise. Outside the studio. I woke up in the woods, this big gash on my neck. And then I saw it, this full moon. I was separating from myself. And that's when I realized I wasn't me anymore. It's been three months since that night, and every full moon since, on the night before and the night after. Total blackout. <laughs> It's all the excitement. And they found another body up in Briar Woods last night. Everyone needs to go home. There's something out there on the loose and dangerous. What'd you see that night? I saw a monster. You seem a little wounded. What's really going on with you? I can't say. Stuart? You're really a werewolf. I'd rather be dead. Charlie! Charlie! Stay with me, man! I can't wait to see your face when you realize what's happening. Oh, Hi, guys. Welcome. Howdy. Hi, Adam. Good to see you. Uh, well, um, it's early, so thanks for doing this uh, on my schedule. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Alex. Nice to meet you, too, dude. Nice, nice to meet you, Larry. <laughs> Larry, you, where are you? New I'm York? In my hovel in New York. Yes, okay, very good. I thought so. Well... It's good to see you guys. Is the film the film is opening today, correct? Uh Blackout is opening today and at the IC Center. Is that true? Yep. How does one get how does one uh, uh Larry, how does how does one st still manage to get a uh, theatrical for a truly independent type of film? Can you start with that? Uh you have to start thirty years ago and know some people. <laughs> it doesn't uh, hurt. Time. Uh, but uh, IFC has been very supportive over the years. We've shown lots of movies there. They even had a glass eye retrospective. So I'm very appreciative to be able to call them. And of course, it's not a business of favor. So I think they liked the movie well enough and thought uh, it had some good reviews and that it might play pretty well uh, in, the, in the city. So we're very fortunate to be at IFC again. And I have to tell everyone that um, I also have an art show of uh, of my monster verse, which are the three uh, scary movies I've made with uh, sort of universal movie monster callbacks. So it's really nice. On the second floor, they always have a little uh, alleyway with posters. And so I invited myself to uh, put up some glass eye trinkets. So I'm really excited about that, including... Uh, animation cells from the movie. There's a couple of animated sequences which uh, indicate uh, the monster's uh, paranoia and psychedelic worldview. So anyway, check that out. If you go to the theater, go to the second floor and see our art. Are you guys going to be uh, there tonight? 
or at all? Yes, we're both going to be there. That's yeah. right. Yeah, for like the what what time? Like the I, I'm I'm assuming like there's a seven seven thirty screening you're going to be at. Yeah, there is a seven thirty screening that we're going to be at, and then there's like a pre party thing, and then there's a post party thing, and I'm sure a lot of but the no crew, party. Lot lots there's of a pre party thing. There's a post party thing, but there's no actual party in the middle. The movie is the party. The movie is the party. That's a good point. I like that. So. I know one thing with Larry, you just already mentioned, um, you know, the, the, these kind of homages for lack of a better term to, uh, universal films. And, um, you know, these films are, are no way remakes at all, but they're, they're, they are a fresh sort of look at how do you bring these iconic, uh, characters to back to the screen in a way, but, in a way that's more, uh, maybe relevant to the, to the day is that a fair way of saying you you know how you begin the process uh i think a lot of artists draw from their childhood uh both good and bad trauma and otherwise and uh i was very affected by the movies as a kid i felt that they represented whatever sort of alienation one felt and sadness for the outsider uh so frankenstein and wolfman and to a lesser degree, Dracula, but the vampires have their own allure. Uh, anyway, I've tried to capture that, but I have, it's not really nostalgic, even though people are recognizing some of the callbacks. Uh, I'm actually deeply concerned with the current state of affairs in society and humanity. And so I'm, you know, and, and the actual answer is right here on the screen with us. Uh, Alex brought tremendous humanity to this role. We're not working with the audience or anything like that we're talking about what is the nature of the werewolf what dilemma would that rise in a in your personal life and uh of course in my films there's often some sort of conversation about alcoholism and other, other addictions and about whatever just uh, human frailty which i find essential and uh you know it's more fun to discuss those heavy matters in a, in a genre film, in my opinion, so that's what I've sort of set out to do. But Alex, his commitment to the role is why you should see the movie. You know, I feel this very deeply. Yeah, even what? though he wears a black uh, hat, which indicates less seriousness than I, I was trying to indicate. <laughs> I... <laughs> I wore this for you, man. I wore I, this for you. Just so you know, I'm reveling in it. <laughs> he, uh, so, he's, so he's, he's a jaws he's a jaws fan if you didn't know just a little bit not yeah. major that's right mr <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Uh, i think we would probably all share that uh so alex what did did you do uh, were you also familiar maybe with like lon cheney jr's portrayal and or did you go back and look at that and um or you know i don't know if that always helps sometimes you know i think uh no, not, that's, not that's, taking... that's, yeah well i think every actor is different every person is different right we all have our different processes and the things that like get in the way yeah or help us grow first of all like let me just say like my perform like the the work i do in this film i mean and that's a subjective thing. I'm glad that Larry loves it because he's had to look at it for years, like years, because I did a, a film with his son as well with Jack. I remember. And so like, I really am, uh, I'm grateful that he enjoys seeing my work. <laughs> um, but uh, working with him was the greatest gift of my life. It, it was, it, that was the party. That actually was the party. The party, the party you're going to get to see is like the video of the party. <laughs> um, and and I think he's a magnificent artist, and I'm really touched that he wanted to work with me. So um, it, it was just a total pleasure cruise. It was like I won the lottery. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, preparation. Well, so the reason I think one of the reasons Larry and I clicked was I grew up watching the Universal Monster movies too, and my favorite performance of all time was Boris. Um, I just like like James Wales Frankenstein was like that was the first movie 
I think I was five when I watched it. And it was the first time I ever had the experience of being like, oh, this is what an actor can do. This is how much soul they can bring. This moved me like beyond, beyond anything I had seen at that point. Um, and so I became a, my, 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 my godfather was a big universal fan and he like, I mean, you know, he's just a guy from the Bronx, you know, he was the Groucho Marx act at a club. He met my mom, they were best friends. They'd been, you know, he helped raise me and, and literally his wall to this day is covered in VHSs. Like it's just a wall of VHSs with three films on each one. And he can tell you about each of these movies and the characters, the character actors, especially in each yeah. one. So I was raised by this psychotic, obsessive geek. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and then I caught his sickness. And so when I walked into Larry's house in Woodstock, I was like, what is happening? And, uh, and we just sort of nerded out, you know, that's what happened. You know, I mean, you should see his toy collection. It's, it's something to awe at, you know, like, to, I, yeah. I mean, like you go to the bathroom, it's like, what the fuck, where'd you get that? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we clicked. Well, we nice. did talk about that on Jack's set. Uh, Alex was dressed in World War I garb and uh, doing a fairly heavy role, uh, but off camera, we would chat about, you know, what inspired him as an actor. And of course it was his dad, but uh, it was also this universal movie. So. Uh, it, it's so it just shows how long a movie takes to sort of come together uh because i i realized that um you know that that alex could be uh, the wolfman and you know i haven't really actively set out to make that movie yet i had been working on the script in various ways for years because i did it maybe a flat or a fraction of it but anyway, this is just what's nice about making films with a somewhat organic way. It's almost like meeting Alex had to uh, decide to make the movie fun. You know, sort of, the, I, I always talk about girders. These are the things that come together to uh, to make a film possible, especially at this budget where you're not, you're not thinking outside the, the, the realm to uh, the big stars, although, you know, whatever, all of that is part of the process. But uh, it was just very inspiring to meet Alex and that sort of solidified my commitment to the movie. Mm, mm. Um, you, you know, we talk about re-envisioning, uh, reimagining these stories, you know, that uh, there's such, there's such um, myths in our culture, you know, uh, and making them, updating them making them kind of relevant and there is in this film again it's called blackout it's um is there's a sort of an environmental subplot do you want to, can you mention just a little bit about that larry or alex and talk about how you developed was this something that you you know i don't know how intentional it is for you to you to to include a uh, you know a, a a thread like that in your story uh, well there's a couple of things First of all, I think at this point, people just look for an environmental message in my movies because that's, that's what true. I, yeah. Because uh, I would say that it's also about a community. Uh, it takes place in an upstate town. We shot it in and around Woodstock, New York. Uh, and and there is a, a backstory of the sort of the town patriarch is trying to uh, build a resort. Now, the truth is that's not just some fantasy of mine railing against environmental uh, uh, degradation. It's actually precisely what happened in our area. There is a dude who's trying to make an enormous yeah. uh, golf course on a mountain. So right. it, 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 then when you uh, water the grass in order to do that, uh, you know, the pesticides go down, they flow down into the water. So blah, blah, blah. This is just exactly the kind of fights that happen constantly in small communities, uh, you know, especially. Um, but I would argue that the other theme in the movie is uh, sort of racism and scapegoating and other things like that. The character of Miguel, played by Rigo Garay, uh, is uh, blamed for the werewolf murder. So, you know, I try to um, think about where we are, but also th this is a werewolf story. So then you think about, uh, well, that's a divided uh, 
personality. Obviously, you're a, a monster at night, and then you're, uh, you're sort of dealing with that in the daytime, which connects to alcoholism. So you see, there's a lot of uh, threads, and that's how I like to approach these, as you say, these mythologies, and that's what's so beautiful. These are our Greek myths, you know, instead right. of Achilles with a weak, uh, you know, heel, uh, we have the werewolf with the problem with the moon. Which is, by the way, you know, that's what becomes fun is what do you borrow from the old stories and what do you reject? I always like playing with the, the mythology, you know, will, why would a silver bullet really hurt a, a werewolf? You know, so you're kind of always teetering on the edge of is this, is this real at all or does this guy have other problems? <laughs> and that's very explicit in my movie called Habit, which is a vampire movie. Right. Uh, I don't even know if there's a vampire in the movie, but he's definitely suffering for something and yeah and I'll, I'll just say adam in reference to your other question which i totally didn't answer yes i did okay. watch all the lon cheney movies again in preparation to shoot but the film that that inspired me the most was habit and oh. that was like that's one one of my favorite films of all time and yeah mine too and i felt like this film was like very <laughs> well you're in good company then um I felt like there were a lot of similar themes, but like Larry's work as an actor in that film was the thing that I wanted to do most. And, and then, and then also like, just so you know, like in preparation, like Larry really worked with me a lot. I mean, we, we were talking about this two years out. So there was, you know, many conversations, werewolf movement conversations, video sent from his you know from his more like this is the kind of thing i'm looking for you see sure. right. um this is the kind of noise we're gonna do here and uh so by the time we got to set it was just like all right cool let's go yeah you know? it, was, uh, it, was, it was so fun and uh uh alex remind us of your movement guy as well he had a oh yeah matt neenan yeah well so so i my mother uh was a ballet dancer and she now she um she like goes all over the world staging balancing ballets that's like her her niche she's one of the best in her field and uh yes yeah, so, i mean she's everywhere like paris london and then like right now she's in san francisco like she's all over the place it's it's nuts i have very talented parents it's uh it's my cross to bear. Um, so growing up, one of my one of my babysitters was a ballet dancer. He ended up becoming a really fantastic choreographer. And when we started talking, uh, Larry was like, I think it's Fosse. I think it's a lot of Fosse movements. And uh, I just said, listen, do you mind if I hit up this choreographer and ask him to help me? And so I would I would get on Zoom with this this guy that I'd known since I was nine years old who danced at my grandmother's ballet school. My grandmother also had a ballet school, very ballet, ballet actors. Um, and, and he would just be like, nope, that's not the run. Do it again. All right, like this, a little bit lower. Can you do this more with your head? More up, more up, more up. And then, uh, yeah, so by the time we got to set, it was just, it was just like, it was second nature. It was awesome. Yeah, there was so much, so much good preparation for this. You yeah. feel maybe like somebody was actually channeling the, you know, like, like, that, like a, that's like a that thing, kind of Adam, animal. Like that's an, that's a thing. That's a thing. And I think it, it's about commitment. But the first night I actually got into the, 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 the wolf. It was it was the shot in the film. Am I giving this away, Larry? Is that okay for me to do that? All right. There's a shot in the film where I'm where the wolf is chewing out someone's jugular, and uh, and I and and Larry was off, and we were getting the shot, and all of a sudden he just said howl, and I'd been practicing my howl for a month or two at this point, maybe even longer, <clears throat> but I howled. And it felt like something inside of my chest cavity broke. And I, and it just came out. It was the teeth were, you know, I don't know. And for every, every direction for about 10 miles in every direction, all these dogs and coyotes started howling back. And everyone, everyone there was just like, what? 
that just happened. So yeah, there is a magic. There is a magic. And there's there's a lot about um, dads in this film, which is also a theme that like Larry visit like visits in some of his work. And uh, and my dad had literally died in March, and we went to shoot principal end of August, September. So uh, like that hadn't happened when we were preparing for this film. And then all of a sudden we were like, we're going to shoot. Um, so, you know, I mean, yeah, there are, there are weird coincidences and I'm not like, oh, that had to happen for us to do this film. But like the, the film yeah, was, right. was, a, was, was this beautiful opportunity to honor and like grieve this, this loss in my life and in my, you know, my siblings lives and in my, my kids lives. It was like a pretty major, you know, hole. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in the movie, William Hurt. What's that, Larry? Yeah. Uh, Alex's dad is in the movie. Oh, he is. A privilege to us. Uh, we use Alex's real childhood photos uh, when he's recollecting uh, the character of his own father's past. Uh, and so we just got uh, really hurt in the movie, which it was, is obviously a tribute to Altered States and other genre pictures that he was involved with. But uh, it's very startling. And, you know, I don't think people will see this interview, and it's another spoiler, but the, it, it's fun to understand that some people just sort of are watching the movie and slowly discovering that, trying to put it all together. So there's lots of little weird self-reverential Easter eggs in the film. Um, the film is called Blackout. It's going to open tonight. The act was, well, we speak, I should say tonight. I'll, I'll try to get some, um, get this going today. Uh, tricky, but I will make every effort. So we uh, let people know that uh, both uh, Alex and Larry and perhaps others from the film will be at the uh, at the IFC Center this evening. Are there this others? Evening and tomorrow evening too, and, yeah. And so Thursday night too. And the 14th. Okay. Larry, Larry, we're scheduled to do a QA and a tomorrow, so you're going to be there, man. Because I'm coming. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Tonight and tomorrow, Alex will be up on stage uh, at the John Squared office until uh, Jim Foster and Uber Gray and, and some other actors. It's a it's an act ensemble piece as well. It's another thing that's fun about the movie. A lot of uh, wonderful actors make uh, yeah. Pieces. No, but Barbara, I wrote down a couple of names here, but uh, some of your regular great Marshall Bell is in this. Uh, it's a um, truly great Joe Swanberg. Many great. Film people, I'll say film people because they're not all, all your conventional actors. So uh, this just in, it opens near New York City today, but but out wide on April 12th and on demand digitally um, also in April. So excellent. Everybody will have an opportunity to see uh, Blackout. And um, listen, really thank you guys. And um I wish you uh, great success with the film, and uh, yeah, and uh, Alex, I hope you're able to come back on with a future project. Larry, uh, maybe we'll see. <laughs> Larry's, Larry, we, we got something else cooking, Adam. We got something else cooking. But thank you so much for having us. It was really nice. Oh to well, you. yeah, I know it's a pleasure, real pleasure. So have a great day and have a great have a great uh, screening or two tonight. And um, yeah, I look forward to uh, to talking to you guys again. Talk soon. Later. All right. Thanks, Adam. Bye bye. All righty.